My name is Emily M. Bender. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Washington. Um, I work in computational linguistics, which broadly speaking is getting computers to deal with human language. From a linguistic point of view, the important thing about a language is that it's a system of signs. And a sign is a pairing of form and meaning. So a word is a sign. Cat, for example, is a word. And it's got both a form, so you can pronounce it cat or you can write it down C-A-T. And it's got what it means, um, which is, you know, a cute furry animal, let's say. And those two things are separate, but they're linked in the word. And the thing about language models is that what they're doing is they are manipulating those forms and then uh, spitting them back out in plausible sequences if we set them up as chatbots. But any meaning that's there is all on our side. So in order to make the argument that a large language model is an understanding, we have to define understanding. In order to define understanding, we have to define meaning. And so in that paper, my co-author Alexander Kohler and I say that meaning is a relationship between the form of language and something outside of that. And that something sort of comes in two parts. There's what you might call standing meaning. So um, the word cat means something to English speakers all around the world. Um, and it's sort of a range of things it might refer to. And then there's communicative intent, what I mean to be conveying by saying cat in some specific instance. Um, and that's going to be may maybe the cat that just walked by. Maybe I'm talking about a lion this time, and I'm referring to it as a big cat and so on. And all of that is contextual. So the Meaning relation is a relationship between the form and something outside of language. And eventually it grounds out in communicative intent. That is, what is the speaker trying to convey by choosing those words? And the thing about a chatbot or a large language model is it's not set up to model communicative intent. It's set up to model the distribution of word forms in text. And it can do that really, really well. And because there are so many patterns in the way we use words, and those patterns come from both grammar, right, the, the things that are grammatical to say versus ungrammatical, and then also the world that we live in physically, the world we build together socially, all of that's reflected in patterns of language. So the chatbots can keep reflecting those back. And we will make sense of it. But it's not that the chatbot has any communicative intent of its own or that has any ability to understand our communicative intent. We are using our own linguistic capacity, which crucially involves imagining the mind behind the text to make sense of that text that has come back. And in the process, we have imagined a mind that in the case of the chatbots isn't there. We uh, introduced the phrase stochastic parrots as a way to make vivid what it is that large language models are doing. Despite the fact that we use the parrot emoji and it's fun to point to the animal, it's actually more about the English verb to parrot, which is to repeat back without understanding.